Hey everyone, Jack Russell and Brad McInnes here at Anime USA 2017. We have a very special guest today. We have uh, Trina Nishimura here. Hi, you may know her from uh, most notably Attack on Titan recently, but she's also been in Soul Eater, Full Metal Alchemist, Brotherhood, Trigun, Fairy Tale, and Alien. The list goes on. <laughs> it is almost exhausting. What aren't you in? <laughs> so um, I like to ask. No, that's fair. I'm not. Uh, I'm not in Pokemon. Ah, yes. Uh, okay. I haven't been in Dragon Ball. <laughs> you, and, and, uh, so let's see, you, your accolades include in 2014, uh, the Pine the Voice Actors, you got a nomination for Voice Actress of the Year, and you actually won the People's Choice there. Apparently. I did? Yeah, apparently. That's what, <laughs> that's what the internet says. That's nice. <laughs> did I get something? <laughs> did you get like a medal or something? Did I miss something? Oh, was there like a party? Did I miss something? Well, that's nice. We'll have to yeah. look into that. I, I should know that. Thank you. <laughs> but, um, we're very excited to have you here. Um, so first off, we're at Anime mm -hmm. USA. I wanted to ask what your favorite thing has been about the convention so far. Um, my favorite thing about Anime USA so far has been Dominique. She mm -hmm. is my liaison, um, and she's super sweet and really, really nice. Uh, everybody in D.C. has always, I mean, I've been to Anime USA a couple of times now. This is my second, I believe. And everyone's so sweet. The fans here are great. Uh, the people in D.C. are so nice. It's snowing, which doesn't happen in Texas. Yeah. I mean, it will because of climate change, because that's a real thing. <laughs> but um, it's snowing, and it's amazing, and it's beautiful, and I, I'm just surrounded by really great people, and I'm just super fortunate. Like, I, everything's great. Like, <laughs> what do I have to complain about? Like, everything's my favorite, and everything is great. Yeah. Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome when you're part of a team. <laughs> I, I, for one, love like a movie and everything associated <laughs> with it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, um, you know, being being a fan of anime and also working in the industry, you know, get to see how the sausage is made, but also you have to appreciate it you know, as a fan. How do you? I'm sure there's a battle raging on your head. How do you toe that line between professionalism and like being a fan? Um. I don't know that I do. <laughs> okay. Like I just like what I like, and I want to watch what I want to watch. And um, I think it's harder for me to watch. It is the, the there is a challenge in watching stuff that I'm in because I'm like, oh, I should have done it like that instead of like that. But um, that's the director's choice, and so at the end of the day. Um, but that's I think that's the only real challenge. Other than that, like I just I. I haven't ever really cared what other people think, so it's like, oh, this is what I want to do, and so I'm going to do it. Uh, is that what you're asking? I don't think that was what you were asking. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, 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 it, it would be for, like, let's say I'm, I'm such a massive fan. If I were to suddenly get into the voice, voiceover industry, uh, voice actor, how would I reconcile, you know, keeping my fandom in check while trying to maintain a certain level of professionalism while I do the job? Or oh. would my fandom actually reinforce my ability oh. to do a bang-up job as a voice actor because I really care about the project or the character that I'm doing? Because yeah. one, one show that I really like, if I were to be a part of, I would lose my freaking mind over it. Uh, Baku no Hero Academia. I know you you have a role in there. Yeah, uh, I'm the ear, earphone. Yes, I, I love her. <laughs> She's an excellent character, and I just love how everybody has, like, the idea of the, the, the superpower, the MacGuffin, whatever you want to call it, the, the quirks in the mm -hmm. series that also describes really, really well each character because they seem they all have their own eccentricities, their own unique they bring to the table. So it's uh, it's just if I were in a role like that, if I had anything, I would just I would really be hard to keep my inner fan, keep the reins on. But, <laughs> uh, one thing I really wanted to ask is what current projects do you have in the works or future projects that are about to happen down the road that you can talk that you're at liberty like, to talk, talk about. about? What can I talk about? <laughs> there are certain things that you can't talk about. I know, but is there anything that you're really excited about that's on the horizon potentially? Uh, well, there is a show called Monster Hunter <laughs> that I love so very much. No way. Uh, so I play Naviru, the cat, the Iru feline, um, yes. and he was he's so great. We recorded um, all of uh, like I think there were 48 episodes that we recorded over the past year. Um, and that the director, Chris George, I don't know if you've heard of him or not, but he is amazing. <laughs> um, it's C-R-I-S, George, not no H. Um, but he directed Monster Hunter, and he's just so great. And he, he, um, he just kind of understands how to let, you know, um, how, how to let you be an actor and how to let you play in the booth and, and, and figure characters out. And he's so funny and such a great guy. Uh, to have cast me and to, you know, just allow me to be this weird, <clears throat> silly cat creature. Um, so, I mean, that that's a really exciting show that I'm super stoked about. Uh, it's been on, it's been streaming at Funimation.com, but uh, I, 
It's been streaming at Funimation.com is all I'm saying. Okay. Okay. Right okay. now. <laughs> that is all I'm saying. <laughs> got it. Got it. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because there's actually a um, Monster Hunter video game coming yes! out this weekend, the beta. I mean, yeah, I don't. So, yeah. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you, are you a gamer? Is what was my next question. Um, I am not a gamer. I've always wanted to be, but after Super Nintendo, once the joystick came into into play, and like you know the air, what's the arrows called? Oh, the D pad. Yeah, the mm. D pad. Like I'm all about the D pad, the A B, the Y, oh, yeah. and the bumpers. Like, I got that. <laughs> but then right. they brought in like the joystick and extra buttons, and I was like, what? And that first like the James Bond game was like the first big thing with the joystick and I was like I don't want to shoot people. I want to like leave banana peels on the road or something. Like I don't I, I don't know. It's not that's not my jam. Uh, now I'm just a weird app person. <laughs> that's fair. I'm all about apps. I like apps. So uh, what what inspired your career path to get into, you know, about voice acting? Dollar dollar bills. Um, ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All that's money. <laughs> no, I I'm I've been an actor my whole life. So I started acting when I was nine in my with my local community theater. Well, I started auditioning. Um, and then I started touring professionally when I was 13 with a theater company. Uh, why my mom decided that was a good idea. Uh, I don't know. Um, and then I went to college, and I was going to be a grown-up, and I was going to go to law school, and I was yes. going to make dollars and be... Do business. This is this is how business is. <laughs> <people walk. laughs> like, I like business, business, business. Right? Yeah. Like, I work. I'm going to change tires and drink coffee and right? <laughs> fill out my taxes. Right? <laughs> I have health insurance. So. Uh, 401k. Right? Uh, so that was the plan. Uh, but I was in college, so I was broke. Because uh, that's your job in college. Yes. I was yes. really good at it. Um, so brokeity broke from broke broke down. And I was working like two jobs and an internship. And I was going to school. And a friend of mine was like, hey, uh, do you want to audition uh, for the show? Like, I know you used to act. They're looking for some female voices. And I was like, no, Jimmy, I don't do that anymore. I'm going to be a grown-up. And he was like, it pays. And I was like, when is it? <laughs> so I auditioned, and they cast me. And then I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. So um, after I graduated, I just decided this is what I want to do. And here I am, because... I'm stubborn. <laughs> like, this is all I want right now. So, what have been maybe I, I know out of the the absurdly absurd number of voice roles that you've had over the years? I mean that in the best possible way. That's amazing. <laughs> you have a wonderful rap sheet. What are some of the most iconic roles that were I guess maybe for you that were able to let you act in the way that you wanted, or maybe um, almost like a representation of your inner self? Yeah. So, um, some of my favorite roles uh, and that I would consider uh, really important to me. Um, obviously, uh, excuse me, I'm not vomiting. Uh, <laughs> I was just burping. Uh, obviously, bleh. No, um, I, Attack on Titan is so near and dear to my heart, and uh, Mikasa Ackerman is such an amazing character, and it's been, it's been a, an extraordinary shift uh, from the time that I started doing voice acting about 10 plus years ago to now um, to see... Uh, one of the things I love the most about Attack on Titan and I love the most about uh, Mikasa is the gender shift, right? Like, because when I started, if you were a female lead, you had to be, like, super well-endowed. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, you can fight, but you only have pasties on. Right. Um, or, like, armor. Oh, like, come on, man. <laughs> sure. Um, but she's, you know, she's driven and she's talented and she's smart and she works well in a team and all of those other things. And she's not just like, I'm chasing a boyfriend. Um, <laughs> I mean, like, especially in season one, like, the her initial, like, um, her drive and everything came from protecting her family unit, her adopted family unit of Aaron and Armin. And it wasn't about, like, oh, I just want to totally get a boyfriend. Um, and that's a really important shift, I think. And similarly with Armin's character, he's a boy, and boys are supposed to be men and be strong and not emotional. And Armin is not physically capable at all and uh, is super emotional and has no qualms crying. I mean, he cries a lot, but he, he, <laughs> he gets to cry. Um, and on the same token, like, there's a character in Attack on Titan that isn't assigned a gender at all. And I think that that's really important that, you know, art is reflecting the shift in how we as humans and how we as males or females or others uh, identify ourselves. And I think that that's really important. Um, so I love Mikasa for that, uh, among other things. Um, I love Makase Kirisu from Steins Gate. Um, she's yep. so great. I love her so hard. <laughs> um, she's just so fun. Um, 
because of her in, intense emotional feelings. And uh, I relate a, a lot to her, not because I invented time travel at 17, but because, <laughs> um, because she is allowed, like she, she's allowing herself to feel things and, and be vulnerable and find relationships in, in a way that's really honest and true. Um, I love Naviru from Monster Hunter. I love him so hard. He's so great. Um, or also, um, Akko from Netoge, uh, Never a Girl Online. And so you thought there was Never a Girl Online. Uh, Akko is so silly. And that was also directed by Chris George. He's, he's really dope. Um, and that, oh, she's so weird and silly and creepy. And I like her. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those are my some of my favorites. Yeah, no, that that's phenomenal. Thank you for that. Um, if so, like, let's say if there was any, you've already have such an amazing, uh, you know, rap sheet for all the roles you've done over the years. Is there some sort of project that you'd want to work on in the future that you haven't had the chance to do yet? Yeah, um, anything Pixar. Yes, Pixar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm available <laughs> all the time, anytime. Uh, anything Disney would be dope. Uh, I mean. I grew up on cartoons, and and my I was raised by an amazing single mother, mm-hmm. uh, and she had four, she had four kids, and was a single mom, and went back to school, and all the things. Uh, so money was pretty tight around the house, but a big treat that we had every year was to go as a family to go see the Disney movie, and we all got our own cokes. Oh wow! <laughs> it was a big deal. Yeah, <laughs> so, plus like a mortgage is that the movie theater nowadays, <laughs> right? So. <laughs> oh my god, it was so neat. It was like the best. I got my own coke, and we got to watch a whole movie and a cartoon in the movie theater, um, and so that was really really cool. Um, so just to be part of that would be amazing. To be like, oh yeah, mom, let's go to the movies. That was me. Because <laughs> you know, like, she never knows who I am. Every time she watches something, she's like, is that you? I'm like, that's a boy. And she's like, but you're sometimes boys, right? It's like, yeah, mom, I do little, I don't do little boys. I voice little boys. I voice. Grandma is important. Just to be clear. To be but clear. I, I think you would certainly boys. have the, the pull to be able to embark on that co- sort of adventure if you Thank wanted you. to. I mean, God willing in the Greek, don't I mean, rest. everybody here would vouch for you. Not just in this room. I mean, this entire convention. Thank you. Like, without I, question. We should, we, we should start a petition. Like, oh, yeah. Really? Like, oh, yeah. And you know Obama lives here. Let's just get him on board. You know, Absolutely. somebody we'll hand call deliver him. it. Yeah. yeah, right. Like, listen, I yeah. love him so hard. I just he's my hero. Yeah. So you know, you're speaking about you know your childhood and stuff. So you know, what if there are um, people out there that want to aspire to become a voice actor or actress? You know, a, a little boy or girl that wants to be the next you know Trina Nishimura, oh so God, to speak. Oh my God, What advice would you have for you know someone like that? Um, <clears throat> I think. I think that uh, if somebody wants to be a voice actor or an actor or whatever, um, I don't really, I mean, I get this question a lot, but mm. I don't think that it's something, there's never just one thing. Like, you can go over, like, the, the normal stuff. Like, if you want to be a voice actor, be an actor first. Like, go to acting classes, train, surround yourself with creative and like-minded people because that's frequently how you get in tune with uh, roles or auditions or casting calls. Um, never like get comfortable with the word no because you're gonna hear the word no oh, all yeah. the time. Rejection is a huge part huge, of the process. Huge, huge. Right? Yeah, like I mean, I think I audition for probably at least five to ten things a week, and if I book one, that's like oh my god, like amazing. <laughs> yeah, but the law of averages, right? Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. But more often than not, there's nothing but, uh, you know, just because that's how the world works, and there's so many talented people out there. Um, but I think that if somebody wants to be an actor or a voice actor. Uh, if they really want it, then they'll figure out a way. Because there's never like one specific formula. There's never one story or path. Right. So I mean, if you want it, then do it and fight as hard as you can and do everything you can to do it. Yeah. Uh, stock all the big name actors. I mean, follow. Them <laughs> on maybe all don't stop. Maybe media. that's not. That's not stock them. <laughs> I mean, that's <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. So uh, that's that. That would be my advice. Oh, that's so cool. And w- when you come to conventions like these, I mean, does it just kind of fill your heart with a sense of like, wonder and awe? It, it, like looking, like, like let's say if you before you had started all this, could you really imagine seeing yourself in the position that you are now? I mean, you just have like waves of fans. Like you're celebrating. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you are, you are a walking idol in a lot of ways. I mean, I don't feel like I am. Like I, I never, that makes you an even better idol. I don't, I, mean, I don't feel like I am. Like it, it's always really surprising to me that that people are like, "Oh, dang, you're Trina Nishimura." I'm like, "I know." I know, right? 
<laughs> my whole life. Like, but I don't understand. Like, I don't understand when people freak out or cry or stuff. Like, everybody poops. You know? <laughs> I poop. They poop. You guys poop. And if you don't poop, that's something that's, to talk yeah, about. That's an issue. Like, uh, that's a problem. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I, it's, it's really, it's, I guess I just don't see myself that way. Like, I, I want to, I mean, it's really amazing and it's so cool that I get to meet so many amazing people and it's so great that, you know, people want to talk about my work and that's amazing. Um, but I don't see myself as somebody that's like, oh, my hordes of fans are here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I like, off your <laughs> yeah, like, it's like, oh, hey, it's really nice to meet you. And I just feel, I, I feel really lucky that I get to meet people that like the same stuff I like. <laughs> and, so. and I think all the fans can read that. They can feel that. You know, you, you don't come across as pretentious in the slightest. Oh, uh, thanks, man. You have a genuine passion for your craft. I thanks. mean, it just comes across in your personality. So, I mean, that's what being uh, somebody in your field, I think we can really gravitate toward that. We appreciate Thank that you. you do your work. You're a professional, but at the same time, you're not all up in your own business and you think, you know, your stuff don't stink. Because <laughs> always... it does. Everybody's stinks. <laughs> but we, we can all, we, I like to think we can all sense that, and that just thanks. makes you that much uh, better for it. Oh, thanks, man. That's yeah, really nice absolutely. of you to say. So, I mean, I know I've been a fan for years, you know. Aw, <laughs> good. <laughs> That's nice. So thanks. speaking of fan interaction, um, uh, the internet and social media, to be you know specific, has you know dynamically changed the, our, our right? landscape. So, could you speak a little bit to um, how you deal or interact with fans on social media in a, both positive or negative um, sure. way? Um, Ho- hopefully, way more positive. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, but no, you, you know. yeah, no. I've I've been really fortunate. I mean, the the fans on social media are are really nice, and it it's always it, that certainly takes takes me back when like on my birthday it's like 8,000 people have wished you happy birthday it's like <laughs> I don't know 8,000 people <laughs> like um that's really amazing uh but no I, I mostly I just feel kind of like a social media failure because there's no way to keep up with all of the emails and and all the messages and so I mean some kid in Poughkeeps- Poughkeepsie isn't going to get a re- reply and 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 I feel like it's not it's not the Bet. I'm not the best at it. Mostly, I think that's where I'd like to be better. Um, but there is this really cool new app called Unlocked, Anime Unlocked, that um, Bryce Pappenbrook just recently uh, told me about. Um, and it's it's really cool. You get to interact with fans directly, and so it's a lot easier. And uh, a lot of my friends are on it now, and they're like, oh, it's so much easier than Facebook because you can keep track of it better. So I'm probably going, I, well, I'm not probably, I'm going to be on Anime Unlocked. I just have to record some video and something else and download it on my phone. Yeah. I have an instruction sheet. But it'll probably <laughs> it'll probably just happen the next time I see Bryce, and I'll be like, do the thing. Yeah, who reads <laughs> the manual nowadays? No, right? No one does that. No. I can't show up on the next I'm going to free ball it. <laughs> <laughs> Usually when there's something like like that, like I'll, I'll call Bryce and be like, okay, it says blah, 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 blah. What does that mean? He's like, turn it off. And now turn it on. I'm like, oh, it worked. It worked. Thanks, man. He's so nice. But unlocked, definitely. So, yeah, I, I feel like social media has, is changing everything uh, so so quickly. Um, but I, I look forward to meeting a lot of new fans on Unlocked. Hopefully that'll be easier. That's good. Yeah, it should be. <laughs> and so for our last question, as we kind of wrap up, um, 2017, speaking of wrapping up, is wrapping up. So um, as like a retrospective back, you know, looking back on the year, you know, were there any highlights or favorite moments of the year as you reflect back and, you know, move into 2018? You know, was yeah. it, a, yeah, uh, any, anything about 2017 that you? Um, in 2017, um, I got to take my mom to Hawaii. That's awesome. That was really cool. That's so cool. Which island? Uh, the big one. Oh, Hawaii proper. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because like Oahu and the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, We went to uh, Honolulu uh, for a convention, actually, and she was my plus one. Um, And that's always fun just to be able to do stuff for uh, my mom that did so much for me and my siblings. Um, So she got to go to Hawaii for the first time, uh, and we did a bunch of, like, kind of older people stuff, (laughs) which was fun. Um, I made a lot of friends on the old people tour bus. (laughs) It's not nice to say that. Uh, (laughs) But, yeah, no, I got to take my mom to Hawaii. That was amazing. Um, I got to see pictures of Obama, like... (laughs) <laughs> like when he was what is that called with the the parachute and, and the thing and the oh, boat uh, paragliding yeah, yeah I got yeah. to see those pictures that was amazing 
Um, I like to pretend like he's still in office. So we're just going <laughs> to stay there for, <laughs> until there's an impeachment or a new person elected. Sure, he's sure. still there. It's okay. Yeah. We're not going to die. <laughs> Nuclear war is not in <laughs> There's not going to be a financial crisis or a crash. And uh, yeah, we're all going to make it through. Let's just keep hoping. I think that's a good way to, to send off 2017. We're all going to make it through. We're all going to make it it's through. Great saying. Just, <laughs> just don't. It's fine. This is fine. This is fine. This is fine. <laughs> this is not fine. There's a Cheeto in the office. All right, I'm done. I'm fine. It's too far. No, that was good. <laughs> it's too far. Yeah. Well, anyways, that's about all the time we have. So thank I just want to so thank much. you again so much for coming and talking to us. Oh, and, thanks, man. Yeah, so. You guys are so nice. <laughs> how, how, how could we not be? You know, we're honored by your presence. So. <laughs> oh, you're. No, thank you. Thank you. I was like, that's funny. Uh, no, thank you. That's really nice of you to say. So yeah, from, from Anime USA, uh, this is the Happy dot com and uh, be excellent to each other and then we'll see you next time. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> that's nice. Do you always say that? Be excellent. That's why I sign off for a podcast. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I like that. That's what we want people to take home. And they, you know, yeah, that, that's our sign off. He remembers his Twitter. He remembers my Twitter because I don't. So. Oh, that's smart. Oh, I should have done that. Next time. Uh, next we'll, time. we'll put it in a little description. That's, Thanks, that's dude. Fine.